Outrocast. So leading into this, how is your evening going? It's evening here in New York. It's evening there in California. Oh, I didn't realize you're in New York. Um, yeah, it's good. It's actually been pouring with rain. Um, how do you say? It? Is it pouring? Do you guys use that? I yeah. Been saying pouring. Yeah, yeah, if you're yeah. a kid, uh, it's raining, it's pouring, the old man is snoring. I never knew what yeah, that yeah, yeah. meant, but yeah. Well, I've never actually had to say that since I've been out here, so I don't even know what the term is that gets used in, in America. But basically, it's been hor- like horrible. It's been horrendous, the, the weather. So I've just been sat on the sofa watching um, June, the new film with Zendaya, with, uh, with my girlfriend on the sofa all day. So There nothing, you go. Nothing to, we've had a day off today, I should have mentioned, really. It's just why I've been sat on the sofa all day. So, sure. yeah, not well, been doing too much. I do appreciate you taking the time, rain or not. I mean, the intrusive media people, they, they take up all your time and energy. How exactly did you wind up coming here to the States? Um, well, first of all, my mum is from Seattle. So I've always had the American passport and it's always been, you know, a large part of, of who I am. And um, I grew up very much with uh, half an American background. Obviously, my dad's English. Sure. Um, but we used to come um, on holiday or vacation back to Seattle and visit my family frequently. Um, so it was nothing. Uh, it was nothing alien or brand new to me. But I grew up playing playing soccer in in England, and uh, my career got to a point where I was looking for more game time. Um, I'd been a little bit frustrated in uh, in England, and I always kind of think I had this thing in the back of my mind, like I've got this American passport, and I was telling my agent, you know, I've got this American passport. And it kind of been forgotten about a little bit. Um, there was actually a point where I nearly, um, I didn't nearly give it up, but we had the conversation about giving up because you need to renew it every, I think it's every 10 years or so. Mm-hmm. And it came up to that point and I was like, oh, and my mum didn't let me. She was like, no way, you know, you're not, you're, you're renewing that. And I was like, okay, fine. I went and renewed it. And, um, and yeah, and it's made the, the, the process of moving to a, a soccer club out here a lot easier. Um, so it's, it's been all through all through soccer is, is how I've wound up out here. Well, it takes a different kind of athlete to uproot to another country because as great as your playing on the field is going to be, you also have to figure out, okay, do we get our internet installed? Uh, have we mm-hmm. redirected all the bills to the home? Was that the hardest part of the whole thing, finding the home and transitioning in that sense? It was. I mean, there's things you don't even think about that need to be set up. I mean, I don't have a credit score out here, for one, which is I've realised is a big, a big deal. Yeah. Um, so I've had to get a credit card and start buying random things on my credit card to try and build up my score. And just, it's just the smallest of things that you just take for granted because you, you've grown up doing those things. Um, yeah. Like getting an American driving license. Uh, you, you, you know, you need to do that and to redo the test and all that kind of stuff. So there, there is, there is a lot to, to do, but I actually kind of, um, I settled in very quickly, but I felt very comfortable from, um, from minute one really. And that was a big thanks to, to my club, to galaxy. Um, they made me feel very settled. They helped me settle in and yeah. I and mean, where well, you have to make that, that whole decision. Where, where do I live? Do I live close to the training ground? Do I want to be, near a beach near I, I can't believe i'm saying that obviously from england but like yeah i'm having to make these kind of decisions yeah and um yeah it was all just brand new but i, I got that kind of sort of in the first two months and uh, and then i was i was settled in and good to go now i'm very curious when somebody does something for a living for a career there's two ways to go about it the one is that's my job when I'm not doing my job, I have nothing to do with my job. And then the other thing is like when you're the 22 year old that is so excited to be paid to do something for a living, you're like, that's all I do. So I'm curious in Los Angeles, I've heard rumors that there's a Robbie Williams musicians soccer game that happens every week or just about, are you familiar with that and, or have you played in it? I didn't hear about Robbie Williams, but I have heard about Rod Stewart. Apparently, really? Rod, I don't know if they're the same thing somehow or not. I don't know. Or I don't know. But I have heard Rod Stewart and his son as well. Um, you know, they have a, some British guys that come and play. I've not played. I've not played. And uh, uh, I've not had the invite, actually. So I don't even know why I'm bringing it up. But I've heard about it. I've heard rumours. But um, no, I'm, I'm definitely... 
I think I fall into the category of uh, someone who lives and breathes soccer, even outside of, uh, it's not like I go to the training ground and then I stop thinking about it when I come home. And to be honest, I think that's been a large part of, you know, how I've got to where I've got to is because I've just kind of lived and breathed it. It's all that I really think about or care about. And, um, and yeah, I, I kind of felt like that's played to my advantage a little bit throughout my, throughout my life and, and throughout my career. And I don't know, I, I'd like to, sometimes I do think like I would, I would like to be that guy as I can come home and I can focus on something completely different and separate those two sides, which is probably maybe a more healthy way of living, but it's just not, it's just not me. I'm just not able to do it. I'm always thinking about, about football, about soccer, um, even when I come home. I have some research to do because I'm not sure if it's the Robbie Williams game or the rod stewart game one of them the singer of weezer i know was playing in for a while oh, okay so, okay okay i i find that's a very intriguing like in the comedy world gary shandling was a very big american comedian and he had this basketball game for comedians that i think happened once a week and i find that's an la thing that doesn't really happen in other cities the thing that you have to get invited to that club that's for the industry insiders has that you don't have to tell me what it is but has that been a big part of your transition to to los angeles figuring out that whole not everything is appearing the way that it is on the surface um to be honest i know there are so many different sides of 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 la um and you can see whatever side you want to see of it and you kind of you you can make the most of it and use it to, to your advantage in, in many different ways. And um, I've, I've kind of found that I've, I've loved living here. First of all, I want to say that like every minute since I landed, like I've been Ooh. so happy. Everyone's saying, Oh, do you, do you miss home? Do you want to do like, what, what do you miss about home? And I'm, I'm struggling other than my family to think of something that I really miss about mm -hmm. England. Like I can't, I, can't, I honestly can't think of many things. Um, but uh, yeah, sorry, I've kind of strayed from the uh, the, uh, the original the original question. But well, I took you off task there. I think you answered yeah. it that you like figuring out the new layers and the new possibilities of this new yeah. home universe. And I think another big, uh, I should guess, I don't know this for sure. Another big difference between playing back in England and playing here is the soccer media has to be much less invasive in los angeles meaning that if you want to go under the radar and be a regular person it's a lot easier here in the states or at least in la yeah for sure i mean uh, this is like the home of like famous people where everyone is someone everyone is doing something interesting here so um soccer is just one of the many sports and one of the many you know I, i'm well aware basketball and nfl definitely rule the roost here um, they're the, the the big sports and then you have hockey and baseball as well and to be honest soccer is actually making a uh, a run at, at some of those some of those sports from mm -hmm. from what I understand and the viewership and the numbers so it's an exciting time to be part of the MLS to be honest and to be here um, I think um, yeah from from a living perspective on a day-to-day -day basis LA yeah, is probably one of the ideal places to live not only because of what's on offer but like you say it's not like you're getting the, the invasive uh, media as well you can just kind of live your life and, and don't have to worry about keeping your head down or anything like that unless you want me to be more invasive as a media person and be as invasive as you want you have full license <laughs> <laughs> so it to recap what I've learned so far, it sounds like it was an easy decision once the opportunity came to relocate here. Now, moving here, do you see yourself a long-term resident of California or at least the state is in? This is where you see yourself setting up businesses? Yes, I do. Um, I mean, like I touched on earlier, I think there are so many good things about, about LA. There are, there are so many different sides and some of the good things are you know, the, the range of people that you meet here and um, you know, there's a lot of very interesting people from so many different walks of life that, that live here. Um, I mean, from, from a business perspective, I haven't really kind of delved fully into, uh, you know, what I, exactly I want to do after, after soccer. But um, yeah, I mean, I do see myself living here uh, long-term. Um, 
it's, it's difficult to say long term because uh, in, in sport in general and especially in soccer, you know, you only really can look towards the end of your contract and you don't know what's going to happen. Things change very quickly. If you'd asked me when I was in England, you know, two years ago, oh, do you see yourself living in L.A. for the rest of your life? I'd have been like, well, oh, not really. No, like, how is that? How is that going to happen? But like now I'm here. I love living here. And um, yeah, I would, I, I would love to have the opportunity to just be able to stay here and then actually settle and live a life here. You mentioned your mother having roots in Seattle. Had you been to Los Angeles growing up? Not growing up. I had been um, on vacation here with my friends. We used to come. Uh, we used to come out in the off season, which would have been like May, June time every summer. Uh, probably came on, on vacation here four times. And yeah, we would come out here for 10 days and pretend that we're like singers or rappers, actors, whatever, whatever anyone wanted to be for, for 10 days. And we loved it. We honestly loved it. Um, we would sit, you know, the winters are cold in England and those, those vacations that in the summer that you have planned and you look forward to, and it was always LA was the place. Um, we look forward to coming here you know, with so much fun here. There is so much to do, like I touched on them. Um, and I know that they're definitely, my friends are definitely very jealous that I get to kind of stay here permanently now. For sure. <laughs> when you were talking about having different personas for trips, which one were you? Were you the rapper or the singer? <laughs> <laughs> I was the singer for sure. Yeah. I leave the rapping stuff to my friends. Yeah. All a bit too much for me that. I could probably maybe live like a rapper for about 12 hours and then I'd probably burn out <laughs> very quickly. Got it. I'm always intrigued by the goalkeeper on a soccer team because I think that there's more pressure on them than other positions. All eyes are on them in terms of if everything's going great, oh man, that goalkeeper is great. If they're losing. Oh, man, that goalkeeper should not have let that up. And I kind of equate that to in music, the drummer, where the drummer is not the flashy position per se, but that's holding everything down. That if the drummer stinks, your band stinks. If your goalie stinks, <laughs> your team stinks. What is it that draws you to that position of anything? Because most people growing up, they want to be the flashy person out front. For sure. Uh, I mean, it's a question I've had so many times just in, in general and just in life, my, people ask me. And, and everyone always thinks, you know, goal, you have to be crazy to be a goalkeeper. And it is, a, it, it is a, a highly psychological position. There's a lot of pressure involved. Uh, things can go wrong very quickly. You can have a great game for 89 of the 90 minutes. And in the 90th yeah. minute, it can go very wrong very quickly. And the first 89 minutes, no one cares. Whereas as a, as a forward or as an attacker or striker, you can have 89 minutes of being terrible. You can be awful for 89 minutes and then you score in the 90th minute and you're the hero. And no one cares about what happens in the, in the first 89. So, yeah, it's, it, I, it's a position that I got into um, basically because I, I was suited to it physically. And I enjoyed playing it when I was a kid. And, you know, when you're a kid, you're not thinking, oh, I'm going to be a professional. And what is that? What, what comes along with that psychologically, mentally, all this kind of stuff? I was just enjoying being a goalkeeper. And, sure. and I was good at it when I was younger. And, and yeah, I kind of just followed the journey. And, and to be honest, I do enjoy it. You learn to enjoy the pressure. And um, I mean, especially here in, in the US, actually, goalkeepers are pretty popular. Um, Unlike in England, you know, the goalkeepers get a lot of praise here. When we make saves and stuff, we, we get put on highlights reels and we get lots of praise from, from fans. And that's not something we actually get in England. Um, so I've actually, it's actually been a bit of a, a breath of fresh air since, since coming here, for sure. And what's your second best sport? Or in your opinion, oh. what are you second best at? Oh, I, I just wish I had a real good answer for this, but I don't. I'm just, uh, I mean, I, I, when I was younger, I used to be very good at, at, at tennis and swimming. And I was just very, like, athletic. But when you start playing a sport, you know, I, I very rarely go fully into uh, any, I'm terrible at golf, awful at golf. So I've yeah. just given up on that, which is a shame because actually golf is a really, like, social sport and a lot yeah. of opportunities to meet new people come from golf. But I'm just awful at it. 
Um, I mean, if I had to pick one, I'd probably still pick tennis. I'd probably pick tennis, yeah. My feeling is that the players on the soccer field are the most vert- versatile of all the athletes because they have to be able to go fast and slow because it's a continuous running situation. Yeah. There's jumping involved. Yeah. <laughs> there's, in your case, there's throwing involved, which not all the players have to be able to throw. There's more no. motor skills that are needed, whereas other sports, not shaming other sports, there's certain sports where you just have to be able to run eight seconds and then you stop. So, yeah, 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 yeah. So no, I completely you, get where you're coming from. Yeah. For you, is staying in shape a full time thing, or do you get just about all of it from on the field during the games and practices related to the games? Well, if you'd ask an out an outfield player that, like a midfielder, for example, I mean, they would definitely get their fitness from from playing games and from training. Naturally, we are uh, goalkeepers. Sorry, are more. We are actually closer to the kind of American sport where it's short bursts, you know, it's, it's really anaerobic, it's plyometric, it's explosive. Um, and therefore, like fitness levels, general fitness levels, you actually have to try and keep on top of, which is difficult because there are so many games in the season that you're, you're having to try and find some recovery, but then also some fitness work, then also some gym work, some weight training and and um, sometimes there's just not enough time in, in the week in between games to do that. I mean, for example, we played on, on uh, so what day are we on? We played on Saturday and then we have another game on Wednesday. Then we have another game on uh, Saturday again. And then after that, when it's just, it's constant. So you look for the small breaks within the season um, to try and work on things that uh, you don't normally get to get the time to work on, basically, like fitness, like weight training. I think you're selling yourself short by saying that goalkeeping is short bursts because you are regularly moving around depending on where the positioning is. So it's, it's a lot of modesty. That's true. That's true. (laughs) We tend to do, so I get told five or six K a game in the game, not including the warm up and stuff. But you know, if you, if you, if you're talking about like the high intensity, like the diving and you got to get up and then, or you got to throw the ball out or, the real, you know, they they happen in split seconds, those kind of movements. And then the rest of the game is, yeah, like you say, moving around constantly. The 5 to 6K, that doesn't include the in and out of the stadium, correct? <laughs> yeah. No. Because no. football stadiums, generally, there's a lot of unanticipated walking. Like as a fan, you, mm. uh, you never parked next to the entrance. So you got that. You got some flights up the steps. You're going to go get a couple of, you know, pretzels and a couple of beers, yeah. and then you need to find your seat and come back and forth. Yeah. I'd have to imagine it's a similar deal for the athlete because the entrance from the team bus to the field and the locker room, that's probably another two, three K right there. Yeah. It's funny you say that because, um, I went to universal studios, you know, they do like a Halloween fright yeah. night type thing. Night. Yeah. And I thought, great, you know, like on a on a Wednesday, we'll go to I'll have training, and then we'll go there and we'll have a great time. And I had no idea how big Universal Studios was. And yeah. we must have walked what felt about five miles, not including the kind of standing in, in line, probably for a accumulation of two or three hours waiting to go into these mazes. I mean, by the end of the day, I was like finished. And next day in training, I was stiff. So yeah, it's the kind of it's when you're not expecting it, that's when it kind of catches you sure well i got two quick questions for you and then you're a free man and the first question is who is your favorite band of all time um oh it's hard to pick one you can give me two or three i want to see where you are you know when you're not pretending to be the rapper for those 12 hours where your Mm. musical preferences lie well, when I was young, I loved Guns N' Roses. I loved Guns N' Roses. Um, I'm cheating and saying that a little bit because it was more Appetite for Destruction. I was just obsessed with that album. Sure. Um, but just for that album alone, they sort of have to go in there. And then I also love, I mean, I love the Beatles. I do like the Beatles. I mean, they've got so many hits. And um, even even songs that the, these rappers sing today, they're kind of still sampled in a lot of the uh, the Beatles songs from back in the day. So it's difficult right. not to say those two. Did, did your Guns N' Roses fandom 
go into the album Chinese Democracy, or had they lost you by then? No, they'd lost me. I mean, I was I was like 10, 10. Yeah. 10 to 14 when I was, it was my parents, you know, my parents showed me this album and it was just all I listened to when I was younger. Weird obsession, but it's just the one album that I just loved. And they, my parents even took me to, to Guns N' Roses concerts when I was younger and stuff, which was an interesting experience. But um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I, that album alone makes me want to say them, basically. Yeah, great album that still holds up, still stands the test. It of does. Time. My last question, you mentioned at the beginning you were watching a show or two with your girl, but do you have a TV show or two re- to recommend as someone who needs a new show to start? Um, what did I just finish watching? Uh, have you seen You? Have you seen yeah. You? We just, we just finished, finished that watching season. That. Maybe the ending wasn't so great of that season. But yeah, season. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you've seen that one. Uh, you've seen all the big ones, Gun- uh, Game of Thrones. You've seen. You want you want something a bit different, really, don't you? I'm just trying to think now. What I've, what if you I've have anything finished. obscure, great. If not, hey, you is a pretty good pick. Um, you've put me on the spot because I do have a few, but just, I'm blanking. I'm blanking now. I'm trying to think. Uh, I, I'll have to get back to you on that one, but I do have I do have a few. I do have a few. Well, either way, I appreciate your time. I'm looking forward to your next game in the New York area, even if you're playing against that team that is really just an energy drink uh, collective and not a <laughs> – do, do you guys ever talk yeah. for that? Do you go, you're not a, you're not a team? We play – uh, <laughs> I need to meet a, like a fan of one to, to actually be able to taunt them or a player or something. I've not, we actually played them earlier in the season. We beat them. So that's, that's all I can do. That's the most I can do for you. Exactly. We, uh, we won 3-2. Well, wherever your next game is in New York, whether it's there, whether it's Yankee Stadium, looking forward to that and just keep up the great work that you're doing. Thank you. I appreciate it, Darren. Outro cast.